You wake up filled with dread. There are holes in your memory, a nebulous sense of guilt. You're fatigued, thirsty, fluctuating from too hot to icy cold. It hurts to even think, but you can't help puzzling over what's caused this terrible affliction. I am, of course, talking about the hangover. We all know a hangover is caused by drinking too much alcohol, but paradoxically, the hangover kicks in when the concentration of alcohol in your blood is approaching zero. So what's really causing your distress? Despite the vital importance of this question, the answer is not well understood. There are several factors that probably contribute to the various symptoms of the hangover. The delayed onset suggests that hangovers happen when alcohol gets converted into other chemicals that your body doesn't agree with. In the liver, an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase converts ethanol into acetaldehyde. This is toxic and may be part of what makes a hangover a hangover. In time, it's broken down into a much safer chemical, acetyl-CoA, by another enzyme called aldehyde dehydrogenase. Some people have a genetic variation in this enzyme that makes them more susceptible to hangovers, and this is more common in people of East Asian ethnicity. The amount of water in your blood is regulated by vasopressin, also called antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. Alcohol suppresses this hormone, which makes you produce more urine than you ought to and leaves you dehydrated, and that may be responsible for some of the ill effects of the hangover. Some hangover symptoms may be only indirectly related to alcohol consumption. For example, fatigue might be because you stayed up all night tearing it up on the dance floor. Or it could be that your sleep quality is affected by forcing your body to break down a large amount of fluid, not to mention a takeaway, just before bedtime. Are some drinks worse than others? Various studies have looked into the role of congeners, chemicals produced during fermentation other than ethanol, that give each drink its characteristic aroma and taste. They're found in higher concentrations in red wine and dark spirits like whiskey, and lower concentrations in clear spirits like vodka. Studies have found it takes fewer high congener drinks to get a hangover, and the severity of the hangover is more pronounced but the ethanol content has a much bigger effect than any congeners, so sticking to gin isn't necessarily gonna save you. What about mixing your drinks? After all, they say beer before wine, you'll feel fine, but is it true? To find out, a team of German researchers and 90 selfless volunteers mix their drinks in the name of science. Some drank beer and then wine, others drank wine and then beer, and some drank only beer or only wine. They used breath alcohol measurements to standardize how drunk everybody got. Unfortunately, they found no significant differences between the groups, suggesting that not only is there no safe order for mixing drinks, but sticking to one drink isn't going to help you much either. So why can Dave drink more than me and feel fine? Between 5 and 23% of the population are reported to be hangover resistant. Scientists refer to these people as lucky bastards, but how do they do it? A Dutch study looked at 36 healthy social drinkers, half who said they had regular hangovers and half who said they're immune to hangovers. In the hangover group, the urine ethanol concentrations correlated with a variety of hangover symptoms, including nausea, concentration problems, sleepiness, weakness, apathy, sweating, stomach pain, thirst, heart racing, anxiety, and sleep problems. But in the hangover immune group, they had less alcohol in their urine and none of the correlations were significant. This suggests that the ability to rapidly metabolize alcohol is more important than the amount consumed in determining the severity of the hangover. But sadly, there's no known way to acquire such a skill. So is there anything you can do about your worsening hangover? Folklore is awash with hangover cures. The ancient Greeks and Romans had plenty of great ideas like curative wreaths, a diet of cabbage, and the advice from the great pharmacologist Dioscorides, who said you should eat five almonds before drinking. Nowadays, the best tips the NHS can offer are rehydration, painkillers, sugar, and bouillon. These tricks may help a little with some of the symptoms, but the truth is there's not much you can do except wait it out. Unless, of course, you can trick your mind into feeling better. Placebos can be powerful, even when you know it's a placebo. In the absence of a scientifically verified cure, do whatever works for you, whether it's a strong coffee or a fatty fry-up. As for the hair of the dog approach, this may only serve to delay a much worse version of the inevitable. Hangovers are extremely prevalent and costly to society, but they're also notoriously difficult to study. Despite the availability of willing volunteers, controlled experiments don't really reflect the myriad factors that influence human drinking behavior. And you just can't trust people to answer questions reliably when they're suffering the morning after. There is hope on the horizon, though. 
David Nutt at Imperial College London claims he's developed a safe synthetic substitute for alcohol that doesn't cause hangovers. This is based on some clever pharmacology. Alcohol is a very promiscuous drug that targets lots of different receptors in the brain that account for its wide range of effects. Nutt says he's come up with a molecule that selectively binds to receptors that cause the nice effects of alcohol and not the damaging ones. If he succeeds at bringing his product to market, the dream of hangover-free booze could be within reach. Until then, there's only one surefire way to avoid a hangover, and that's not to drink. After all, a hangover is nature's way of telling you not to do it again. But being human, cheers.